Hey class, it's Adam again. Uh, nope. I'm getting things set up here. Uh, we'll probably get started in about 10 or 15 minutes. It's 4 p.m. right now where I'm at, uh, back in Baltimore City. Uh I've got some people over on Discord in our chat room who are paying attention. If you can't hear me, please let me know. Uh, so far, it looks like everything is live. I'm just trying to find my, find my way back to my uh, Twitch TV dashboard. without playing sound over top of it, uh, without Twitch auto launching other people's streams. So I'm gonna mute myself and leave the camera up. Send an email to the class, letting you all know where the stream is, where discussion will be afterwards. Today we're gonna be talking about a little bit, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the project so we all know and are on the same page with expectations there. Then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the conversion from processing to P5.js. That's going from uh, Java to JavaScript. I have some demonstrations to show you, some sketches that I'm gonna convert so you can see how that works. And then uh, a demo that kind of shows what communication is going to look like. What, uh, what, what the big thing, the big thing that switching to P5.js gets us, that for me is the selling point on the whole internet thing. So thank you for your patience. If you will bear with me, we will be starting class shortly.
I am muting myself right now while I type and get stuff done so you don't have to listen to me breathe for five more minutes. We will get started at about in about three more minutes.
All right. I am sorry. Yes. You are not. You do not have broken hardware or a broken device. I was muted. I'm finishing up. It's a little scattered. Thank you for your patience. Welcome back to session two, uh, Creative Coding, IA215. Uh, my name is Adam Bachman. I'm an instructor at Maryland Institute College of Art. If you are not in our Creative Coding class, you're welcome to be here. Uh, I have no reason to keep you out. And this material is all super important and interesting. Uh, for anybody who wants to make things with code, uh, as long as those things are kind of visual in nature using processing and the processing programming language. <clears throat> Today, uh, oh Lord. Today, we are going to talk about a few things. Uh, I'm going to take about an hour, so we'll finish about 5.15 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I want to talk about what's up with the project. I got some questions. I want to make sure everybody understands the same thing I understand. Uh, I want to make sure if I wasn't clear... anywhere by email, I'm clear now. Uh, I wanna make sure there's no confusion and I wanna make sure that I'm not giving you too much information to process. So the project normally would be week one, we've all finished our code. We set up our machines, uh, connect our laptops to some screens and we present our code all by itself. During that week, the only deliverable, the only thing you have to turn in is a presentation of your project that is live in class. Uh, I don't get any code from you. I don't get any documentation. You can take videos during that time. You can take photos during that time. That's how it worked last semester. That's how I've done all my classes. Week one, we present our projects, do a little bit of crit critique uh, just get to ask questions and look at things week two that is the week after we present projects we do documentation that gives you a whole week after you presented to gather your thoughts to put screenshots to make a very very brief written document i sent you uh during the week if you look at your email from me hopefully you still have access to micah email or the email address you gave me that you're reachable at. Uh, I sent an example of a written project document. Uh, that is probably the best example I've seen. It was pretty to look at, nice to read, and included a lot of extra stuff. But because normally we would have those two weeks to turn in the whole project, I'm not expecting any written materials or project code until next week. So to be real clear about the email I sent, uh, I'm gonna go grab it real quick so I can quote myself. Uh -oh. I sent it, but nobody responded, so it's hard to find. Uh, week one remote updates. All right, full project with documentation is due 
on April 13th at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So that's right before class next week. The whole package of information. If you have code you would like to show today to get some uh, light critique, to get some feedback, if you're still working on it and you want help, Today's a good day to do that. We're going to meet as a class in the Zoom session after this. Everyone who is available, if you are not available or Zoom for some reason isn't playing nicely with you, that's fine. I'm not expecting we will see live presentations of code. Uh, I understand times are weird and it's difficult to do things in real time with everybody all at once. So. Last thing I'll say about the project, April 13th, 4 p.m. Have it in by then. Uh, I really strongly suggest you look at the email I sent last week. It also laid out my expectations for what passing this class looks like. Uh, I'm pretty flexible and relaxed. I don't want you to be worried. I'm going to give you deadlines so that you have something to work towards and something to kind of test yourself against. Uh, but really, five homeworks on a project is what I'm looking for minimum. All right. So that's the project. There we go. It's on screen. Again, I will be asking for volunteers. Uh, we'll have plenty of time. You'll have plenty of time to set up your screen before we get to that point. Uh, I can't make it happen on this Twitch thing. We'll do it during Zoom after this. Switching to P5.js. Uh, if you had asked me, if you had told me at the beginning of the semester, we would have as much trouble as we had uh, making sound and video work on all of our computers at the same time with the same code. If you told me we would have had that much trouble, I would have picked P5.js from the beginning. Pardon. we know now what I didn't know then. So we picked processing, which is uh, still very powerful. We got a lot of interesting work done and the things we learned there will be transferable. We didn't lose any time or waste any time that is on something that's not gonna be useful. Sorry, I'm juggling screens here real quick. We're going to be switching over to a platform called P5.js. If you want to visit the site where that is located, we'll get there. Uh, P5.js.org. You can feel free to poke around and read. Uh, stay with me though for a little bit. I'm going to show you some demos. I'm going to talk about programming languages, the processing platform. I'm going to convert some sketches. Uh, but first, I want to talk about why. Uh, why this is an interesting opportunity. Why this is an interesting moment for us to be distributed, but still be together uh, in this weird semi-personal, uh, detached, but real time place. Uh, we're online, we're online together. Uh, I don't know where you are. I don't even know if anybody is still in Maryland state with me. Uh, but it doesn't matter, does it? Because the internet right now is connecting us. Uh, I've got this beautiful, uh, I'm sorry that it's not animated. This was an animated GIF with like sparkling water and uh, 
this beautiful mountain scene. But it's kind of tongue in cheek. The internet was a mistake. Uh, it's also one of the most important developments in human history. If I was going to rank, I wouldn't rank them, but if I was going to pick, it'd be like medicine, modern medicine, vaccines, antibiotics, uh, chemotherapy, uh, the ability to do surgery without killing somebody, the internet. I'm, I'm so, so on cars, but, uh, definitely the modern petroleum industry that gave us beautiful things like plastics, uh, without which we would not have medicine. The internet connects us. So I'm going to try to do something that, uh, I would normally do on a whiteboard and I would be able to draw a picture with markers and we could take pictures of it and remember, uh, we'll see how it works. We'll see how it works on screen. The internet is a wire. All right. This is kind of what we need to know. I'm going to, I'm going to not go too deep and we'll keep unpacking this for our last few classes. We have today and we have three more sessions after this. So we don't have a lot of time to unpack this, but we'll get there. The internet is a wire. The internet, uh, is a wire. Every thing you've ever done, every website you've ever visited, every cell phone you've ever picked up, every game you've ever played. Uh, I am on a computer. Dang. You know what? I'm going to see if I can, ah, oh, man, I should have set up Miro first. Been using Miro for work. It's great. If you've never used it, I highly recommend it. Sticky notes, drawings. Uh, Christ, this is awful. The internet is a wire. For all intents and purposes, there's only one wire. We're all attached to it. Uh, computer, cell phone, PS4, uh, Google.com is a computer. It's on the internet. Uh, Twitch. Discord. Uh, what's something else that's on the internet? Uh, I used to have a weather station. It's got a little thermometer and humidity sensor. It lives in my house. Uh, I haven't plugged it in for a while, so I can't show you the live data. All of these computers are connected to the wire. Once they're connected, They can act roughly in two different ways. We gave those two different ways a long time ago names. We kind of we kind of broadly separated everything on the internet into two different categories of thing. Clients and servers. I always say I'm not going to fiddle with style too much, but clients send requests, send messages, servers come now, Google. All right. Servers send responses. Clients send requests, servers send responses. Most of the time, that's all we need to care about. These requests and responses, we could call messages. 
Uh, some people who do network programming might use the word packets. I'm going to make sure my face isn't covering any of this. I'm just looking over and noticing that it's close, but not quite. One second. <laughs> I'm just looking back at the stream and seeing that one of my children poked their head in. That's all right. This is what this is. We're all at home. We have all got stuff. We've all got other stuff going on. Uh, by the way, this is being videotaped. Uh, I am recording this. I am publishing it on YouTube. Last week's presentation is up on YouTube. I will make some cuts if there are long breaks of time so that the YouTube version is slightly shorter than this glitch version but I'm not going to edit for like, um, and, uh, this is not highly produced content. Uh, all right. Clients and servers, clients are computers, servers are computers. They're all connected to the wire. Uh, client sends a request, server sends a response without, without telling too many lies. We can say that these are all texts. It was kind of decided a long time ago uh, with, with, with some big exceptions for things like when you watch a movie on Netflix or YouTube, uh, when you make a stream and you publish it to Twitch. With those exceptions, almost everything that goes on the internet, almost every message Every request and every response is made out of text. Uh, this simplifies things because if we can create our own messages and send them to a server that we control, we can decide what to do with them. Uh, I'm telling you all this, I'm planting this like kind of seed in your mind. The internet is a wire, uh, to say it's. Uh, there's a lot of complexity. People like me, web developers, there's a lot of complexity we've put on these things so that we can do fun stuff like Twitter, Twitch, Facebook. We build a whole applications that everybody uh, can look at together. We get like this consensus, consensual, uh, shared view of reality because we all visit the same service and we see messages from each other. Uh, we make this complicated so that we can do stuff like that. But underneath, at the very bottom, it's not that complicated. The internet is a wire. Computers connect to the wire. Computers talk. They send messages. They receive messages. Uh, I say all that because the most interesting thing to me about switching to P5.js is not... Uh, one second. This... I have a window open because it's beautiful outside. It's like 68 degrees in Baltimore right now. It's as beautiful as it's going to get. Uh, but that makes my door slam open and closed. So I'm going to go shove something in there real quick so it doesn't bang all evening. All right. The reason this is compelling and interesting to me and something I want to share with you is because P5.js is written in the language JavaScript, which if you are viewing this from a browser, JavaScript is the language that everything that happens inside the frame of your browser, everything that happens inside this window, uh, every, every, almost every dynamic thing happens because of JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript is the native language of the browsable text-based internet. Uh, there are some things hidden away when we talk about, when I talk about servers, this is extremely like inclusive word server. 
because it's uh, big things like all of Google, which is probably, frankly, millions of computers, uh, but we can treat it like one. Uh, Twitch.tv, tens of thousands of computers. Uh, my computer, when I do work, is a tiny server. Uh, there are things that happen on servers that are not JavaScript, but just about everything that happens here, client, where we're going to spend our time uh, building sketches for each other to look at and interact with, is happening in JavaScript. So by using the native language of the internet, we kind of get along a... a what comes along for free with that is connection, is a direct line. Here, we'll make it. We'll make it big so it's obvious. Our sketches, when they are opened by somebody who is connected to this wire, our sketches are on the wire. Uh, the demo I'm going to give today, I'm not going to, I'm not going to assign any homework on it today. I'm going to show a demo because you still have the project to finish. So I don't want to overload you with homework uh, or something new to poke at. Uh, I'm going to give you a demo and I'm going to give you links so you can go play with it, but I'm not going to make you play with it. The demo I'll finish with is a sketch with about 10 lines of code uh, that's going to connect to every other sketch just like it running at the same time. So hopefully if glitch is up and we can all open the page together, we will be able to share messages with each other in a way. All right. The internet is a wire. Computers connect to this wire. They pass messages to each other. We're going to put ourselves on this wire in this system. Whiteboard goes here. We did that. I got the whiteboard. It's slow, it's a little clunky. I appreciate your patience. So the first place we're gonna go is editor.p5js.org. I invite you now to open this page up for yourself. Uh, the first beautiful thing about switching from processing to p5.js, I know I can appreciate, let me just say, like I can appreciate that this is like a little bit annoying to have a new programming language thrown at you mid-cycle. This is not what I was planning to do. I was going to kind of throw a new programming language at you anyway. It was going to be for hardware, uh, but it was going to be browser-based. To be fair, this is browser-based. You don't need any new software. Uh, you open this URL. You should see a view that looks like this. This is a P5.js sketch. This is a lot like our earliest uh, processing sketches. I wanna open one of those up right now just to see it. So I'm trying to organize windows. Uh, let's run it and see what it looks like. All right gray square. Fantastic. If I wanted to build this same sketch in our old stomping ground processing, I would do it like this. Background to 20. I would run it and I would get a gray square. Interestingly, on my screen, I can't tell. Those look like two different grays. I don't know if I believe it. I'm gonna open up a color monitor. 
Yeah, okay. I guess that's just, uh, they look different to me. That's funny. That's real funny. So I can run the same sketch on two different platforms in two different languages, get the same output. P5.js is not that far off from processing. They're two different programming languages. This is a language called Java. Uh, we could call it processing or processing Java because it's kind of a, a limited subset. They did some work for us so that we don't have to think about all of Java. Similarly, P5.js hides a lot of complexity and gives us uh, a simple way to edit because it's in the browser, because the browser is kind of web native, because JavaScript is a little bit more fluid. Uh, first thing they did was they gave us this button, auto refresh. If I am writing some processing code, that works. It will update on the fly. Mouse X, mouse Y. This is all this is all pretty familiar stuff. Most of the stuff you're familiar with was is here. I'm gonna demonstrate some conversions, a conversion so that you can at least see it. It's gonna be videoed uh, on stream here, so you can come back to it. I am not the authority, or I am not the best authority. Don't even know if I'm a good authority on what P5.js is. Uh, if you want links, I can get you links to somebody who is pretty good at this stuff and also has a lot shorter videos on what the deal is and converting from one to the other. Cool. So the same tricks we pulled in processing, we can pull in P5.js. Let's see. I want to, one more thing before I leave this. Uh, one more thing I want to do. I want to make the ellipse move. So something we remember is we had a variable called, we called it X and we had code that looks like this. Uh, X equals X plus one, a little percent sign width. And when we were out here, we could say int X equals zero. Now, uh, this is not, this is not the first big difference. There's another big difference in here. I'll actually, I'm not going to say it, but I'm curious if anybody can point out the big difference you see on screen between P5.js and processing. Uh, I'm wondering if I can make this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big font. Cool. You can see the other big difference. So first big difference I want to call out is processing Java wants everything you talk about, all the variables, all the functions, all the collections, wants you and needs you to be very specific about what that variable is. It needs you to tell you in advance, tell it processing in advance, what type of value you're going to put in your variable. X is an integer. X is a number with no decimal point points. Uh, X is a number with decimal points. Uh, X is, I don't even know, is that? X is a collection of characters surrounded by double quotes. P5.js doesn't care. So we can use the word let. Uh, P5.js doesn't even care that we said let X equal the string zero. P5.js saw us try to do math on it. Uh, JavaScript saw us try to do math on it, turned it into a number. String zero plus one mod width. It just worked. It turned it into a number. It had a pretty good idea of what we probably wanted and did it for us. JavaScript is what is called a dynamic language, JavaScript. 
is dynamic. The type of the variable can change. It's a string here. After this, it's a number. It's converted. Uh, if I want to say later on in some function, which is our other big change, uh, that x equals hello world, uh, It did not like that. What didn't it like? Print line. Oh. Let's see. Is that happy? Hey, there we go. I briefly turned X. Oh, man. I just want to stop asking me if I want to translate every little thing. Uh... Extension options. Don't display icon or pop up. Cool. It still wants to ask. Uh, uh, all right. I am trying to make this other thing be quiet. And I don't know how to do that. I turn it into a string. I print it out to the console. I turn it back into a number. Sketch keeps running. P5JS doesn't care what type you're talking about. As long as you use it in a way that makes sense. We can still screw ourselves up. We can still say things that don't make any sense or are illegal. But the first big thing that P5JS gives us is it's a dynamic language. There's a lot less uh, worrying about what type of thing is. All right. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm blocking some of the code. Real quick, I'm curious. Creative code demo. I want to see if I can share this. Project saved. Yeah, no worries. Uh, my sketches CC demo. Well, I don't think we can edit together here. That's okay. Somewhere would let us do it. It'd be a little chaotic. P5JS. P5JS.org looks a lot like uh, processing.org. They've got a reference section. Most of the stuff you saw in processing is the same. Uh, two, uh, three big changes. Types are different. different. You can just say let. So no more int float string array uh what other ones do you see array lists uh color all the different kinds of things we had to play with to do type we just say let second instead of saying instead of void setup we say function processing because it does uh, JavaScript because it doesn't care about types doesn't care about what kind of value our function is going to return what type of value so we don't say types anywhere in Java we say the type of the function the name of the function curly braces and so on in JavaScript we just say function and we don't say size we say create canvas. All right. Is this? Oh, I hit stop. Yeah. Cool. This is taking 
a p5.js sketch from nothing, doing some things to it that look kind of like the code we touched in class earlier. Uh, now I want to pull up some examples. So there on the class folder, this is at uh, codes 2020. Nope. That's not it. Bit dot L Y. Come now. I'm, I'm posting a link in discord here. There we go. Looking at the class uh, code repository. I'm looking at uh, session 10 that's today kind of amazing this is feels like a whole new semester but we are two sessions into the last third of this semester and i'm going to open up a sketch called java color fader all right this is a sketch that has some complexity there's some stuff happening with particles uh, there's some stuff happening with color. I'm going to, for now, I'm going to prune out the stuff happening with particles. And we're going to just look at color. So we're going to look at color, some lines. It's a pretty simple sketch. Uh, I've been enjoying a lot of a subreddit called Outrun. It's very synth. 80s vibe and I it's kind of like came to mind All right getting rid of particles getting rid of particles getting rid of particles will it blend yeah here we go all right so this is a processing sketch in the old world style uh, my types are all very clearly described I'm using colors. I'm using a float. I'm calling my functions. I'm going to convert this. We're going to see we're going to see how many lines change. I'm going to convert this. We're going to count how many changes I have to make for it to work. All right. So, I'm going to pop open a new web editing session. I'm going to go new. You could do the same thing if you like. Uh, it is broken. All right. So first thing is we can get rid of all these. Let, 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 let. No more types. So that's uh, four. Four. Uh, are there other types? Let five. Let, let, six, five, six, seven. Nice. All right. Cool. Can see all the code. Uh, we're up to seven. This is got to be function. No type there. Just function. Eight, nine. Let's see. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger too. Uh, oh, this was create canvas, create canvas 10. I wonder if it'll work. Ooh, another type. Ah, uh, let. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Uh, another type. All right, that's 11. 12. Oh my gosh, what is it telling me? Color is not defined. Line 2. Okay. Oh, did you just try to use P5.js's color function? If so, Ty, welcome. Welcome. Uh, if so, you may want to move it into your sketches setup function. Okay. All right. So this is, all right. So I need to leave these out here. 
because I want my let on the outside so that I can use it later on inside my draw function. Uh, but I can't use it again in here. Or else it'll redefine it. It'll shadow it, uh, put it inside the scope and not last into the sketch. Let's see. Oh, that was it. Okay, that was, uh, let's see. I copied these three lines out. I put them inside setup. I deleted my lets. So it's copy, paste, delete lets, and deleted the setting out here for more. 16, 16 changes. <laughs> but I split up. I said uh, each of these I counted as one. So I got rid of all my types. I replaced all of them with let. There was some color, some float, some int, some int. Uh, all my functions still worked. Lerp color is a fun function. Lerp color says, give me a blend between my starting color and my ending color, my last color, in this case, my previous color and my next color, and do it on a percentage basis. So a percentage of the distance, zero to 100, which when we're doing computer math, uh, percentage is, uh, let me, Percentages run from 0 to 1.0 using like decimal points. So 0 0.1 is 10%, 0 0.5 is 50%, and so on. Because if you multiply a number by 0.5%, you come out with half. That's the way I think of it. That's what helps me remember that percentages. So Lerp color says blending from previous to next a certain percentage. And all I'm doing is drawing every line of the screen here from top to bottom, every pixel from the top to the bottom, from zero up to height, draw a line across the screen whose color is picked based on the distance from the pixel from the top to the bottom. But I'm kind of fading what color we're aiming towards. I'm, I'm changing it. So it changes slowly and then also on each frame all the way down. I don't know. I was just playing. I came across this. Uh, it was fun. The horizontal stripes because that, I don't know, that feels more 80s to me. And you can see my old processing sketch is still running right next to it. It's for all intents and purposes doing the exact same thing. So that's converting an existing processing sketch from processing to P5JS. I want to, I want to write that down real quick. Uh, all right. We did uh, convert all types to let uh, convert function types uh, to function because that, that works for us. We changed void to function. Convert uh, size to create canvas. Honestly, don't know why they did that, uh, but we roll with it. Didn't have to change anything about color. Uh, didn't have to change anything about math and functions that do math. Our stroke weight, we know what that is. Stroke, uh, a line, stroke, stroke color. Uh, we set. F don't we don't even touch fills here. That's fine. And. The last thing I did, uh, put color inside setup. 
That's it. Nice. Uh, going back to the class code folder. This is the second of three things that I wanted to do. Uh, coming back here. If you download the whole class repository and uh, open this folder, that's, let me see. Come here, hit download zip. It'll zip it up. It's only five megabytes. Uh, open this folder up. I'm gonna run through it. I'm gonna show it to you just so you can see it. Uh, I open up the folder, I go to session 10. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I'm sorting by most recently used. Uh, color fader, double click on index, opens it up in my browser. Look at that. Gwiz, it's code. Uh, if I want to make changes, I can open it in my current favorite text editor for playing with JavaScript. I'm gonna shut this guy down because I think he's making my computer go nuts. Quit processing. Sketch, save, don't save. Uh, this version is slightly more complex than the version I just demonstrated because this version also includes particle stuff. Uh, we get particles, particles, are described down here. I will leave the complexity of that code for you all to read through if you feel so compelled. But that matches up with the uh, all right, we just did a download, creative coding, uh, Java color fader maps onto the behavior that processing was doing for that same. Doo -doo -doo. Tell you what, it has been getting slower and slower to open up processing on my computer. And I don't know if it's something I'm doing or what. So this code is all up in the class folder for you to see. Pew, pew, pew. Oh no, it is animating very slowly. You probably get some like hitches because I'm trying to stream it and you're trying to look at it, but it is running just as slow for me as for you, I bet. Whew. This is still super quick. Browser's got, maybe browser's got priority right now. All right. Also included in that folder, not a homework assignment. Do not interpret this as a homework assignment. There is an empty template project. If you feel so compelled, uh, you can convert one of your old sketches to P5.js. You can drop it in this template project and it will work. It'll launch in this nice kind of like browser framed thing. Uh, I think there's a little bit of cleverness in there to make the background of the web page. Did I put that in? No, I didn't. I just decided they should be the same color. Uh, oh no, I didn't give it any color at all in the background. So it's just the color of the page. Uh, I can see it running. All right, it's there for you. Play with it, don't play with it. There will be homework. You'll have a chance to play with something like this. Probably not this complex. Don't worry about all this other stuff that's happening. If you like playing with the internet, with JavaScript, with HTML and CSS, it's all there. This demo has it available to you, but don't feel compelled. All right. I'm going to pause there. Uh, I'm going to go grab a drink of water briefly. I'm going to turn off my camera. 
mute myself for about three minutes, about five minutes. I'm going to go get a drink of water. I encourage you to take a break if you need to take a break for about five minutes. When we come back, I'm going to open up the third uh, and uh, last thing I want to talk about converting a sketch code goes here. Good. The place where I actually want to try to have us share some code with each other uh, is a site called glitch.com. So let's, sorry, that's a black screen. Uh, excellent. Camera's off. I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to take about five minutes. That's 5, 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I'm going to be back. In the meantime, I'm going to leave this glitch link up and try to drag over this fun little sketch because it's pretty. All right. See you all back here in five minutes. Ooh, also, save up your questions. Write them down. Feel free to put them in Discord as direct messages to me. Uh, feel free to, you could try to drop them in Twitch TV chat. I cannot promise that I will be able to catch them there. Uh, I don't know how well, I don't know that system as well as Discord. But uh, please save up all the questions. I would love to answer questions about this stuff.
All right. Coming back, coming back online. Still a minute till. I want to put a. I want to put a list down. Uh, make sure I store some of this stuff. Create a new file. Putting some notes up. Converting. Uh, sketch. To P five JS. Cool. Just making sure we have that. That's up in the class repository. That code's preserved. All right. Glitch.com. Let's talk about glitch.com. P5.js is processing. If P5.js is processing written in the web's native uh, language, JavaScript, the language of the web, glitch is a tool for building websites and web applications for putting things on the wire glitch is a tool for putting things on the wire written in the web's native language glitch.com is a site for building web applications from extremely basic web applications to fairly complex web applications, things with databases, uh, things with communication. Uh, actually, you know what? The side by side. The tools for building and the tools for browsing all right here uh, what's up let's see what's up this is by the way what I just did in Chrome was I hit command option J and popped open a thing called the web developer console developer tools oh developer tools yeah developer tools console we'll play more with this when we're working in p5.js on our own on our own uh little apps but p5.js is processing but native to the web glitch is putting new systems on the internet connecting new things to the wire built on the web so what I've got for us are a few links I'm gonna show two one is a processing sketch and the second is a processing sketch that talks to other processing sketches so first I'm going to copy this link and drop it over in Discord so you can see it. Uh, that's glitch.com slash. Then that little swirly symbol is called a tilde. Honestly, don't know if it's on every keyboard. On my keyboard and most keyboards, it's the thing on the top left-hand side. Uh, it looks like a little squiggly line with a little tick mark below it. They call that a tilde and a back tick. Uh, so it's glitch.com slash tilde ia dash p5js dash demo d e m o. Links up in Discord. Uh, oh my goodness. If I click on this link and you click on this link, we should see the same screen. It looks a little bit like this. Uh, 
when I click on it, it's my project. So I see my face and I see edit project. I see what do, what do you see when you click on it? Incognito, not signed in. Uh, when you click on it, you should see something that looks like this. The code of the page running down here, some links up at the top, show takes me to the site standing by itself. No more editor. I can share this link with somebody and they can see the same thing. I can share this link with you all and you can see the same thing. Uh, this is probably pretty funny. If you're watching this in real time, you probably hear me say a thing about 15 seconds after I do it. So you see a link pop up and then you hear me send it. Uh, I don't know what to say other than you are all time traveling wizards. So glitch produces a page that looks like this that I can share, give you access to. It produces a button like this that lets me see what's here. Oh, I can see you all. Look at us. Anonymous, anonymous, anonymous. Here we are. Uh, if I want to make changes to this sketch and run it on my own, I can click the remix button. Even though I am anonymous, Glitch gives me a brand new application that's just mine uh, at Rai Exclusive Trunkingosaurus. It's going to take a minute. This is a piece. So please just close it up. One second. Was that? Yeah, come in quick. Do it quick. You can do it quick. Uh, I, I keep thinking I muted myself when I didn't mute myself. So, hmm, this was a piece that was down about an hour ago. We may not get, we may not get to remix during this session. That's okay. Uh, Uh oh, we broke it, you guys. That's all right. Once you have Remix living on your system, uh, you should see all these same things. I've got index.html. I've got a sketch.js style. All style is doing is putting the sketch in the middle of the screen. If I Let's see. I'm going to make sure the code's not hidden. If I make a change, it reloads with my changes. Oh, that's not enough. Let's go a thousand. Ooh, there they are. There's my, my dudes. Uh, speed. Bump that up. Nope even faster yeah I like it all right gives me a tool for making changes to my sketch seeing them immediately this you'll notice uh, looks almost exactly like the p5 js editor uh, in you could you could probably pick either one. Uh, but there's something I'm curious about. Something that glitch lets us do that P5.js doesn't let us do easily is add plugins. Uh, so I'm not gonna break down this sketch that we're seeing. It's another one that uh, you're welcome to dig into, remix it, break it, do something new with it, change the color palette. Uh, what happens if we just limit this? A lot of the keyboard shortcuts you had in processing will work over here in Glitch. That was command slash for me, and it just commented out that block of code. I'm curious, like, uh, let me know if 
you're looking at the editor, uh, looking at the sketch.js file, if you see this stuff happening in real time, I'm curious. Uh, this is doing a lot of setup to make all the variables tweaked between all these different things. Uh, here, I want to trim it down and we can see it simpler. All that's happening is I drop a dot on the screen. I give it a angle and a velocity. I walk it forward a step and then I tweak its direction a little bit based on random noise. Tweak its direction and I kind of fade its color. I do a lot of stuff, probably too much stuff. This may not be a great example as a demo. That's all right. I had fun building it. Like I'm sure you had fun. I hope you had fun building some of yours. So very similar environment. We got code on the left. We got site on the right. But Glitch lets me build a whole site, a whole web application. Uh, if I want to clean this up a little bit, first thing I want to do, I would do. I like the glitch button, so I leave it in, but I could drop it out. And now it's gone. I can share my short little link. It is unique to me on the whole internet. I've put something <clears throat> on the wire that was not there before. I am participating in the system in a new way. Uh, P5.js editor will let you put something on the wire and share a link to it. Open processing, if you remember I introduced that. I know some of you like got some great use out of it. Uh, that puts your sketches up on the wire. Glitch is my personal choice because the next thing I want to show. So the last piece of all this and where I want us to end up. Uh, I'm going to go about another 10 or 15 minutes to show this last thing off and then we're going to take a break for dinner because uh, I got to eat and uh, some of you may have to eat if you're on a similar time zone or schedule. Uh, what putting my code on Glitch lets me do is connect it. So I'm posting to Discord the last link I'm going to share. This is the one i really hopeful will work for us. So I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of blasting through these sketches. I'm showing you a thing on Glitch. I'm giving you a link to it. I'm going to compile this into an email that's going to go out. So it's going to be documented. Uh, it will go on the links. Uh, doop, doop. I'll put it in here. I'll put it in here right now. Uh, session 10. Editor.p5js.org. Uh, Glitch.com. You don't have to sign up for a Glitch account. I recommend it because, you know, it's cool. They're cool people. Uh, I was kind of a jerk to them on Twitter and complained about Glitch being down publicly, uh, though they knew about it. And it was a little bit intense because I hope to go through it a lot during this session. And it suddenly went away at about 3 p.m., about an hour before class started. But then they brought it back. They're wizards. They are also time traveling wizards. You don't have to create a glitch account, but I do encourage it. All right. I'm going to pop this open. Some of you may already have this open. Uh, if you can get this open, I'm going to wait. I'm going to, I'm going to click around a little bit until I see at least one other dot up here. Oh man. I hope it's working. Hey, we got someone, we got someone. This may be, uh, Isaac still has it open.
I'm like a light teal color. I see like a lavender. I see somebody has discovered what's happening here. They got one classic. Uh, fortunately, from what I can tell on our uh, Discord chat room. And uh, as far as I can tell, Twitch, I have no idea. There are 13 people watching this Twitch stream. Maybe they are in our class. Maybe they are not. Uh, <laughs> no vandals yet. Uh, if you see something appear and you are unhappy with it, you can simply refresh your browser. We go back to zero. So what kind of black magic deep network code is powering this app? If you want to take a look, you may have already skipped ahead. Uh, Oh, I switched to green. I changed colors. A little collaborative uh, anger drawing going on here. He's got a little goatee thing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm going to click view source. So I'm switching away. This is good. This is perfect. This is great. I'm glad somebody got on at the same time. Would it be? Oh, yes. Questions. Great questions. No, that's fine. Uh, would it be possible to embed glitch stuff in a website without following the link? Yes, almost certainly. Uh, web technology does that with a thing called iframes. Uh, and just for the sake of poking, because we're here, and I bet I could do it in under a minute. Uh, I'm going to say new. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to say uh, all right, body. HTML. Uh, I'm going to save that. I'm going to call it index.html. I'm going to put it on my desktop. And I'm going to make that link be this thing. Uh, I don't know what that's going to do. Let's see. Uh, that's on my desktop. It's called index.html. Was it on my desktop? Where did I save it? Ah, uh, hello. All right, I'm gonna have to open up Finder. I said a minute. It's already over a minute. I just wanna. I just wanna work through this. I love getting questions. Feel free to like shut down while I sidetrack us. Uh, all right, that's super ugly. So style uh, iframe with 100% height, 100%. I will put this code up. I'm not going to like let this code go. Uh, height 100dh. Yes. All right. To answer your question, can you embed glitch uh, margin zero padding zero uh, border zero? Cool. So yes, glitch is very friendly with uh, embedding. I've worked on a lot of web projects where part of our uh, requirements where you could not embed it because there's like authentication or uh, secrets or shopping. Any shopping website will prevent you from doing this because like if you could stick Amazon inside another page by putting it in this 
thing called an iframe, then uh, you could hide it in the background underneath and make somebody click on their account page and change their mailing address and you could steal all their stuff. Iframes are a little bit dangerous. Uh, glitches chill with it by default. So yes, if I wanted to, for example, build a portfolio website and include some sketches that were glitch, plain HTML web pages, I could do that. It may be easier to do it other ways. It may be better for your own portfolio site. I don't know if it'll work on like Behance or something, if, but Behance may be able to do embeds. Uh, I've never played with it. That was a very good question. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, because something else that's interesting is like this file is on my computer, but part of the magic of these tools, uh, it's on my computer, I've opened it on my computer, but it's loading the source, it's loading the code from somewhere else and making the connection out. Uh, a distinction worth making, one second. Something, something kind of worth understanding here when we're dealing with this tool, this new tool. Uh, when we built a processing sketch and we ran it, uh, it ran on our computer. When you are working on a P5.js sketch in the P5.js editor and you run the code, it's running on your computer. It's running in a browser on your computer only. When I make a fun and clever, uh, I got too many, I got too many windows here. When I make a fun and clever glitch based P5.js sketch, uh, it's running on my computer when I visit the page, let's see, I'll pop it back in here. It's running on my computer. When you visit the same page, it's running on your computer. When I share this link on Twitter <coughs> and people open it up, nobody's gonna open it up. Nobody follows me. It's running on their computers. The connections it makes to the internet, to this wire. Where did I put that drawing? Uh, to the wire. All go back to one single place. Some code runs in one place and then goes back out. But we're still living, this is still code that only runs on the computer of the person who looks at it. So. The code lives on a computer somewhere, but it doesn't run until I open the page, my browser interprets it and executes it. So just so we like have a clear idea in our heads of what's going on, there's not code running on someone else's computer and showing me images. The code that's showing me images still lives inside my browser on my computer exclusively so nobody else can see what i see you can see it now because i'm streaming it on twitch but there's not code running on someone else's computer it's on my computer i got the code from somewhere else and it can stay somewhere else i don't have to store it myself it lives on the internet all these sketches that i've shown you from the first moment we started talking about p5.js uh whether i'm in this editor or I'm looking at glitch, all that code lives on someone else's computer and I don't have to worry about storing it anymore, but it's running on my computer. Cool, okay, I just wanted to make that clear because that's the thing that I know like confused me for a long time about HTML. Where does this live? When is it running? Is it running all the time? Is it only running, how's that work? All right, you've probably already gone in and looked at it if you're watching this in real time. 
and you are curious about this, uh, all of that connection, uh, all of that communication is bought for us, uh, comes, comes from a library with about six lines of code. So I want to show that because this is, this is kind of like the culmination of this session is like, we're going to be doing something new. We're going to be using a slightly different language. We're going to be doing it on the internet for the rest of the semester. Oh boy. Oh boy. I can't make that text any bigger because uh, I made my lines too long. All right. There are three important things that are happening in this processing sketch to make this all work. One, inside setup, we are connecting to a thing called a web socket. A web socket is kind of like a telephone call where uh, most internet communication, when we're using our browser, we visit a page. We make a request that's a little tiny blob of text that our browser spits out and a big blob of text that some other computer, a server, spits back, boom, dumps it into our browser, our browser runs it. If we look at uh, the network, when I load this page, I made a request. That request is called get. The get request was about this big it's pretty big there's lots of stuff in here there's a thing called a cookie you've heard of cookies before it's just text uh the cookie gets sent to the server the url the path gets sent to the server my browser said what kind of response it was ex expecting uh but the amount of data that flowed back across the wire to build this page was huge way out of proportion to what I sent uh, 52 kilobytes to get HTML a bunch of stuff uh, what is it about 12 megabytes about 12 megabytes of data had to come back I'm digressing sorry I'm rambling I love the internet uh, that's a big conversation tiny question gigantic answer web sockets are different web sockets uh, uh, that's almost like all right last metaphor I want to make that web request cycle tiny text request 12 megabytes of data come back kind of we can kind of think of it like placing an order for a package uh, if I order a 50 pound bag of rice my request is minuscule it's electrons it's dear restaurant supply store send me rice and i get back a 50 pound bag of rice that's a conversation that's distant it's very asynchronous web socket is more like a telephone call i make a call i go beep boop beep nothing comes back in response to me the telephone call starts now i can say hi is this a restaurant supply store yes this is do you have rice yes we do we start a conversation. So the first thing I do is I open a conversation. I'm still talking to a server, but I haven't said anything yet. It's still able to talk to me, but it hasn't said anything yet. Uh, you'll notice this sketch that we were playing with has nothing in the draw function. It is completely empty. Part two, second feature of this sketch. Uh, we're all going to remix some of this. I'm showing it to you now. I'm going in a little bit of depth because this is going to be like our last homework assignment. We'll be extending, playing with this idea a little bit. Uh, there's a new kind of function that I added to processing. It's kind of like uh, mouse pressed or key pressed. It's an event. Something happened and we want to draw or change the sketch a little bit in response so a message was received the message included data and the data had some values uh, in this case 
data is always received as a thing called a JSON object. There's some links here to what JSON is. Uh, they are pretty complex. You can read about them. The uh, other people probably have explanations of it. The best way, let's see. I want to. I want to try my hand. Uh, JSON is how we are creating a collection of values and giving them names. You could kind of think of it like a package of variables. In this case, I wanted to record three things. I wanted to record an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and a color. We're kind of looking at these things. Maybe we're looking at these things in backwards order, but my sketch uh, by default says, whenever you get new data, whenever you get new data and you tell me about it, do this, uh, pick a color, fill, uh, set the fill. This is, this is processing. This is processing code. Now we know how this works. Uh, if a color value didn't come along, use a default flat gray, uh, low kind of dim gray, set the fill to that and draw a shape at the location I described for you or the, that the data described for you. So the data said what color to use, the data said where to put it. Let's see, I saw a glitch in my stream. I don't know if that was me or you, hopefully uh, you are still able to see everything. Or if it was Twitch TV, I'm trying to like uh, watch myself while I record this thing. And frankly, I don't know how my internet connection is keeping up. Uh, uh, all right, that's part two. So part two, respond. When you get a new message, do something with it. Part three is what kind of messages do I want my sketch to send? So part three, uh, there's a lot of detail here about what's going on. A uh, little kind of like unpacking of what JSON is, uh, how we're using it. The example I like where I always go when I encounter something like this is show me, show me how to use it. Show me what it looks like when I type it with my fingers on my keyboard. Uh, That third part, what data am I going to send out when something happens is this function here. So there's connect WebSocket. There's message received, which sits on the outside of your code, kind of like a uh, mouse pressed or key pressed. It's a function that only gets called sometimes when something happens and send message, which is a function that I call that publishes a value. So there's one way to think of this. Uh, I said phone call. You could kind of think of it like uh, following somebody on social media. When you follow them, nothing has been sent or received. You've only told the service that if they say something new, uh, if they post a new story or image, I want to hear about it. You subscribe, you follow. So I'm kind of following this new channel. I'm following it whenever something happens. I want to hear about it. And I want to publish back into this channel. So when mouse pressed, so this is a function we recognize because we did this in processing. When I press the mouse, send a message. That message should have the mouse X value the mouse Y value and my color. My color is just at the beginning of the sketch, pick a random color. All right, so we can see, uh, how this can change. You may have seen your page refresh. I just made a change to the sketch. The page
page refreshed. I'm now drawing squares. Look, it's no longer whatever it was. It's a pixel art mob code generator. These, these three things uh, use words specific to this processing sketch. I built a library. It may change during the course of the semester. Uh, these three ideas uh, create a connection, listen to messages, send messages are going to be kind of the three the three hooks we hang our code on uh, when we start writing p5.js so that's a lot that's a lot to consume i appreciate you all uh your patience um for those of you that like really stick with this uh because it's awesome this is that's why i do it for a living this is a coolest friggin' thing anybody's figured out how to do yet uh this connection this sending receiving reacting uh is really neat to me uh <laughs> somebody got the almost twitch color i see you so let's see uh i don't think there's anything else this is a lot to take in. Uh, the video is going to be up on Twitch for two weeks because that's how long they'll give me with a free Twitch account. I'm going to put it up on YouTube. Uh, I made the last one a private YouTube video. I'll probably make it public and make this one public too. It will take a few days because this is going to be like two gigs. And that takes a long time to upload and YouTube to convert. Uh, but it'll be there. You can come back and reference any of this that you want to. Frankly, I recommend going somewhere else on the internet and referencing it. Uh, it's real. I also appreciate that it's real hard to take all of my talking in without being able to stop me and ask questions. Uh, all right. Cool. Code running in my browser makes a connection somewhere else to send and receive messages. We are distant but connected. It is 5.47 p.m. Uh, where I'm at right now. Uh, if there are no questions in Discord or in Twitch, uh, I'm going to turn off the stream for about about an hour. I'm going to come back here at 6.45. I'm going to come back at... Uh, sorry. I'm not going to come back here. I'm going to go to Zoom. Uh, I would like you all to come back with me to Zoom. Uh, Isaac is going to be doing a presentation. He's put together a deck. Uh, finally. We wanted to do this presentation like the week before spring break and I kept telling them to push back. Uh, they were very gracious and are willing to do it today. Obviously, right before spring break, things got weird. So it's been pushed back. We're going to do that presentation on Zoom. Uh, we are going to have some time for me to answer questions about the project, about assignments. Uh, any questions you have about this code that we saw today, though those questions may be more profitable for us or fruitful or more useful for us next week. I'm going to do some more demonstration and we'll start to see, we'll, we'll get our first homework assignment. Basically, I'm going to spend less time on this next week. I'm going to give the homework assignment and we can work on it together on zoom so we're going to do that 6 45 thank you creative coding uh go eat dinner or breakfast or lunch wherever you're at in the world 
uh, or a snack or just sit and think about this reality we now share. Have a good night. I'm going to mute myself and leave this stream up just because for probably about 15 or 20 minutes, then I'll take it down uh, and see you all on Zoom in about 45 minutes to an hour, about an hour. All right. See you later.